Okay. All right. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Okay. So we are going to continue our anti inginal drops. Okay. All right. Previously in the class, we tried to save him. You all came up with the ideas that we would need these classes of drugs, which is vasodilator, cardiac depressant, and other drugs. Uh, and uh, yeah, we are going to talk more in detail about these drugs. Wait a minute, I have a message. Uh, take uh, SS now or in the Okay, Tuba, it's like that. You take the attendance right now, okay? And uh, just see if anybody leaves the class. So just uh, strike off the presence and mark absence. Okay, it's very easy to convert P into an A. All right. Okay. <laughs> so let's start. Um, hmm. So the thing is, uh, okay, I have a message again. All right, good, Tuba. All right. So now, guys, look. Uh, we we discussed um, we discussed previously about the drugs which are used in the angina treatment. Or all right, so they were uh, vasodilators, cardiac depressants, and other drugs. When we talked about vasodilators, we talked that nitrates and nitrites are actually used. All right. <laughs> Why? Why? Okay. So the thing is, wow. So the thing is uh, that when we talk about vasodilators, okay, so nitrates and uh, calcium channel blockers are, <coughs> sorry, used. When we talk about nitrates, so we have three categories, which is short acting, intermediate, and long duration action, okay? Uh, it's very important for you all to see and note here that when we are talking about uh, the short acting ones, okay, so they are sublingual, the intermediate ones are oral, and the long acting are transdermal, all right? Uh, all right, then we talked that we can also use beta blocker uh, to have our cardiac depressant done. And then we talked that we can use the modifiers, right, uh, which can alter metabolism of the drugs. Uh, so we'll talk more about in detail later on, all right? Okay, now, uh, all right. So first of all, uh, the first category we are going to discuss is nitrates and nitrites. All right, so the thing is, um, again, they are divided into rapidly acting and long acting. And when we talk about rapidly acting nitrates, so they are used to terminate acute attack of angina. And here the drugs include nitroglycerin and amyl nitrate, all right? And I, like I said before in my previous slide, that they're usually administered sublingually, all right? Now, when we talk about long-acting nitrates, all right, so it is used to prevent an attack of angina. And it includes, the, this is a very famous drug among these, so this is isosorbide dinitrate. Uh, and these are typically oral, all right? All right, okay. So again, the thing is, how do they work? If you remember, in my uh, previous semester also, we studied that how exactly uh, this ni uh, nitric oxide is actually working, if you guys remember, right? So the thing is this, that you see, uh, this is guanyl cyclase, which is active, okay? So the thing is this, this nitrate actually activates it, all right? And as a result, what will happen is the CGMP, uh, it will increase, all right? And when this will increase, so it will automatically enhance phosphorylation, all right? And as a result, uh, the vasodilation will happen. If you remember, we also discussed it in deep detail in our previous semester. So what exactly they are doing? See, as I said before, nitrates main target is to do vasodilation, right? Uh, all right. And when we talk about vasodilation, so that means we are dilating the ves vessels, blood vessels. And when we talk about blood vessels, we have arteries and veins, right? 
So it means that uh, uh, the nitrates will be dilating arteries, will be dilating veins, right? Okay. So let's start with the first one, which is coronary artery dilation. You see the arteries which are present on top of the heart, all right? So they dilate. As a result, what will happen? It decreased coronary bed resistance will happen, right? And as a result, uh, after load will be decreased, okay? And increased coronary blood flow will happen. And it will eventually increase the blood supply, right? The other effect of nitrate is it will reduce peripheral resistance. Obviously, when the artery is going to dilate, right? So peripheral resistance is going to get reduced. As a result, blood pressure will get reduced. After, after load will get reduced and it, there will be decreased workload because of which oxygen demand will be less of the cardiac muscles. Then, uh, like I said before, that here we are going to target not only vasodilation of arteries, but also of veins, okay? So, venous dilation will also happen, right? Okay. And when we talk about uh, venous dilation, that is reduced venous return, okay? So, because of that, there will be decreased left ventricular volume. And as a result, the preload, <coughs> sorry, the preload will get decreased. And of course, as a result, the workload will, uh, of course, reduce. All right, and decrease oxygen consumption again. So if I sum up the effects, okay, I have two participants, let me ad admit them. All right, so um, if, I if I sum up the effects of nitrates and nitrites overall, okay, so we can conclude that coronary artery dilation will be there, right? Reduction of peripheral resistance, and how come? By doing arterial <coughs> dilation. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. Then is reduced venous return, that is degree preload. All right. Um, so this is overall the same thing. Okay. Let me move on quickly. All right, so potential deleterious effects. So the deleterious effects are reflex tachycardia, <clears throat> right? When uh, the blood pressure will reduce, then automatically as a compensatory mechanism, <clears throat> this will, uh, uh, you know, uh, the tachycardia will be there. Reflex increase in contractility, decrease diastolic perfusion, um, and as a result, increased myocardial oxygen requirement, decreased myocardial perfusion. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Routes of administration, like I've said before, it's sublingual route, oral route, intravenous, and topical use. Like topically, we use when uh, we want it to be administered over a long period of time, all right? And sublingual, we use when we want the effects to be there at a very fast space. So the thing is, uh, when we talk about sublingual route, so it's rational and effective for treatment of acute attacks of angina pectoris. Half-life depends on the rate at which they are delivered to the liver. Oral route to provide convenient and prolonged prophylaxis against attacks of angina. Intravenous routes useful in the treatment of coronary um, vasospasm and acute ischemic syndrome. Then is topically root, we, we use it when we want to provide gradual absorption of the drug for a longer period of time, right? Okay, I want you all to look at the short acting more because long acting, I'm not going to discuss in that detail. Uh, you can always, uh, you know, look at the formulation of these drugs. I want you to please focus on these drugs. Okay, <clears throat> so the thing is a mild nitrate, it's 0.1823 ml, which we give uh, in a single dose, okay? And we give it by inhalation and it's it will produce effect in just three to five minutes, right? Okay, when we, uh, when we would aim for 
short acting drugs all right so it means we would aim to give these drugs in the condition when we want faster effects right okay so the thing is why are we choosing nitroglycerin more because you see when you go to hospital um and um you you would see that this drug is more frequently given as compared to this drug right so the answer to this is this that because amyl nitrate has very peculiar taste okay and uh, because of its unpleasant odor okay um an extensive cutaneous vasodilation okay so it makes it less famous and it makes nitroglycerin get more famous though its duration of action is like really fast right okay uh, then we have isosorbide dinitrate i am going to talk more about it uh, you give that to sublingually so uh, in the pre upcoming slides i will talk more okay all right now coming up to adverse effects of these drugs so the adverse effect is throbbing heartache flushing of face dizziness especially at the beginning of the treatment postural hypertension due to pooling of blood in the dependent portion of the body and you see this is a limiting factor of giving the medicine right if somebody starts to get hypertension you immediately you know check at the dosage of this medicine large doses produce myth global um, sorry myth more uh, myth more uh, globulin globinemia my god and cyanosis all right so what is um methemoglobinemia all right what is that so the thing is this if you look here the blood actually changes if you look here it's plus 3 and it's plus 2 okay so the thing is this uh here plus 3 peri peroxide does not form right um and uh, you see it's plus 3 so when it's plus 3 oxygen of course will not be absorbed more by the blood and eventually the blood will be darker in color purplish in color right so brown color brownish purple in color it's actually okay and if you look at these people okay you can easily compare that this person has this condition uh which is actually a side effect uh, of it okay now contraindication contraindication is that if somebody has renal ischemia acute myocardial infarction patients receiving other and you have pretensive agents so we are not going to give the people these medicines right all right so the next category is beta blockers all right so it has hemodynamic effects like we have discussed before also when we were discussing anti hypertensive drugs in the class physically <clears throat> so it decreases the heart rate it reduces blood pressure and cardiac contractility without appreciable decrease in the cardiac output and that is why we say it has hemodynamic effects right that it is not touching the contractility of the heart but it is definitely touching um uh, that how much uh you know uh, blood pressure would be there and everything all right okay so beta blockers decrease heart rate and contractility it increases duration of diastole increase coronary blood flow increase oxygen supply and the other task it does is it decreases the workload and decreases oxygen consumption contraindication again is congestive heart failure asthma complete heart block all right then is calcium channel blockers again we have discussed this task also in detail in class uh, but i will uh, try to cover it again okay so its effects are it it has uh, coronary artery dilation reduction on peripheral arterial resistance and decrease in afterload right all right when we talk about the calcium channel blockers i really want you all to know that we have you know these uh, these are the types of calcium channels all right 
and here it's the distribution. So here, when we are discussing with beta blockers, so here we are actually targeting the L type of the calcium channels, okay? Because they are present on the cardiac muscle, right? All right. So what do they do is coronary artery dilation happens, decreased coronary blood resistance, and as a result, it increases coronary blood flow and increases the oxygen supply, right? Uh, okay, so overall, again, the same thing. It decreases blood pressure, decreases afterload, decreases workload, and decreases oxygen demand. Uh, most commonly, like we have studied before in the class, uh, nifedipine, gram, uh, gram fill, uh, diltazim. I think the spelling is messed up here. Okay. And you see here, it's very important that you look at the half lives of these drugs. Okay. So this tells you that which is the famous drug and which is the drug which you need to give instantly if a patient comes up with this kind of a situation, right? Okay. So unwanted effects other than nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea are dizziness, flushing of face, tachycardia due to hypertension, contraindication is cardiogenic shock, recent myocardial infarction, heart heart failure, atrioventricular block. Okay. So you see, you can give combination therapies, okay? So here, first of all, we are going to discuss what if we are going to administer nitrates and beta blockers together, okay? So the thing is, the additive efficacy is primarily a result of one drug blocking the adverse effect of the other agent on net myocardial oxygen consumption. So beta blockers block the reflex tachycardia associated with nitrates and nitrates actually attenuate the increase in the left ventricular and diastolic volume associated with beta blockers by increasing venous capacity. If you co-administer calcium channel blockers and beta blockers together, so it is useful in the treatment of exertional angina that is not controlled adequately with nitrates and beta blockers. So beta blockers attenuate reflex tachycardia produced by nifedipine. So these two drugs produce decrease in blood pressure. All right. So again, calcium channel blockers and nitrates. So these are useful in severe vasospastic or exertional angina. All right. And um, nitrates reduce the preload and afterloads, calcium channels reduce the afterload, net effect is on reduction of oxygen demand. Then is triple drugs. You co-administer all of these, nitrate, calcium channel, and beta blocker. So these are useful in patients with exertional angina, not controlled by the administration of two types of anti-anginal agent. So nifedipine here would decrease afterload, nitrates would decrease preload, beta blockers would reduce the heart rate and myocardial contractility, right? All right, so uh, this is the kind of a table I, um, I gathered so that you may know that how exactly um, you will give the medicine in which kind of a situation, right? All right. Uh, when we were talking uh, about the classification, so then I discussed that there is another class which actually helps you um, to get control of the metabolism of the drug, okay? So this is this drug, okay? This drug's name is uh, dipyridamol, uh, all right? So this is a non-nitrate coronary, coronary vasodilator that interferes with the metabolism of that interferes with the metabolism of the vasodilator adenosine presumably by inhibiting adenosine deaminase it potentiates the effects of pgi2 and dilates resistance vessels and inhibits platelet aggregation if you remember 
in the last semester when we discussed about actinal sites we discussed this all in detail right uh, i have another slide by which uh, you know you will uh, get more idea about it uh, all right so this uh, this drug may be used for prophylaxis of angina pectoris but the efficacy of the, this drug is not proved so it pro produces adverse effects that include the worsening of angina dizziness and headache so how exactly this is working if you remember i produced similar kind of a slide for you in the last semester that is the endothelial cell will actually produce pgi2 prostaglandin and as a result the atps will be converted into cmp and because of that vasodilation will happen right all right everybody thank you so much and uh, inshallah taala by end of december i will be conducting your vivas all right wait let me stop the video